What's going on, y'all? And welcome back to Double M Live, episode one thirty. Hey, yo, that's a lot of that's a lot of episodes. Thirty episodes, man. We've been we've been marching through, we've been pushing through, and it's a blessing to be here. One hundred and thirty episodes, and more to come for sure from Double M. We are here live in the Sound Lab in this beautiful location. We got. Got some special guests with us, but shout out to Tex. Tex is in the building. What up, Tex? It was good. Was good. Was good. Everyone always got mellow in the background, Hold helping it down, it down man, as magic. always. But Mike, nice man. Introduce our guest for us today. Ooh, this guy right here, I'm telling you, maybe five, six years old. That's how far we go back. It's a long time, but my guy Bash is in the building. And I'm so excited to have him here because we've been meaning to do this for a long time. Uh, I think a long time ago, back at Bridgewater, he came in for one of our shows that we did. I think it was Double M Sports. Okay. I believe it was. You remember You remember the cover? That, that was a long time ago. That was that like was 20, yeah, 2013. Yeah, like five, five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, I, mean, I, 20, think I, I just graduated college, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you came in. But, I mean, a lot has happened. A lot has changed. A lot has gone on. And we're going to get into all of that. But... I'm excited to have Bash here in the garage with us here on Double M. Bash, appreciate you being here, my guy. Appreciate welcome, you guys. welcome, yes, welcome, yes, welcome. Sir, man. Appreciate you guys having me. This is uh, this is dope, man. I love I love what you guys do. We have this platform for uh for our people. Yeah, it's awesome. It's dope. Yeah, man. So. We're going to get, dive into a lot. I see you got the bag here on the side here. I had to bring a little merch. You got the logo there. You got the logo on the oh, I didn't even uh, peek the feet. He got the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got the to, logos there. I, I actually just got these uh, today. Uh, my guy who um, he owns this company called iSlide. Okay, and, uh, okay. They're actually located in Hyde Park. Ah, he hometown. He come through, and he, um, his daughter plays um, at Medfield High. So I've known her. I've seen her daughter, his daughter play and stuff. So we kind of connected, and he was just hit Gave me some slides today, and I had, had to. I haven't took them off like my feet because <laughs> yeah. they're, they're just so comfortable. I like so, uh, so shout out to I Slide. But we're gonna get into the logo on the slides. We're gonna get into the logo on the bag. Sure thing. But before we do that, one thing that you know brought us together years ago, and even as we've gotten older, our love for the game of basketball. For those who don't know, watching this, this guy right here, this guy was a legend playing uh, basketball. With him coming out of. Uh, middle school, coming out of high school, I couldn't make the middle school team. I think I was on the B team. This dude was on the A team. And if you okay, know about brother, middle it's school okay, sports, it's okay. we, we, it's we okay. went to West. So I wasn't like trying out for this, this, <laughs> this was the guy right here. He yeah, was holding we, it down right. for. <laughs> <laughs> he was holding it down. It's middle right. school, high school ball. Um, but just quickly talk about, you know, your love for basketball and you know how that got started from you and you know just what basketball has meant to you. You know, over the years, as 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 you've gotten older, and then we're definitely getting to this too for sure. Um, yeah, uh, I always love basketball. Um, it's always been my favorite sport. I'm not sure what got me into it. I know my dad was, you know, a big hoop head. It's crazy. I'm like the only one in my family, even extended family, who actually played basketball. Wow. So like, okay. my, my dad was like a park legend. Like <laughs> he would always tell the story about how he beat Patrick Ewing one-on-one. What? But he was like 18. Patrick Ewing was like 13, still like 5'10". <laughs> you know what I mean? It was one of those, like, I played Patrick Ewing back in my day. It's like, well, did you? You know what I mean? Like, And then Pat Ewing like grew to be like 6'8". My, my dad didn't want any more smoke. He was <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we, 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 we were We were good there. But um, but no, I, I think, um, but yeah, so I just always watched him when I was a kid. I was obsessed with reading the newspaper and like we're looking at the stats and following the Celtics, and I was a big Jordan guy. So um, I was just, goat. I just love watching the game, you know, both the men's and women's game. Um, I just, just, I don't know, just always wanted to play, always wanted to be around it. So starting around was like a little kid. How was how was Mike and Ball? I knew this question was probably uh, coming. It was weird. Like I feel like Mike got better like once we graduated high school. So like after like like when we needed him to actually play the sport, he stuck. <laughs> like then like well, as soon as we graduated, we were in men's league. And he's like catching dunks. I'm like, where was this like five where, what, years where, what, ago? Where, where you needed when we were it. like when we needed someone to you know do this kind of stuff. So, shout out to know. Brockton. Brockton brought the dog out of me when I started playing ball out here. So shout out to Brockton. But shout, shout out to Mike and the men's league team that we dominated for a couple years back in our uh, back in our our prime yeah that was definitely 
my, my coming out party. You was already well known and established. Like, oh, you bringing Bashir to the league? He's gonna play with us. Me, that was my coming Bash. out party. <clears throat> my fault. My fault. He 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 brought us out, and he, and he definitely helped dominate the league in terms of his ability on the court. And I was just a guy trying to find my way. But the more we dive into basketball, Bash, definitely want to ask you about her hoops network. Something that you know I've peeped that you've got you know off the ground and rolling and, and continue to build up you know I've been watching for, from afar I've been really admiring everything that you've been doing so definitely get let's get into the origin of her hoops and how it got started and 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 how it got going for you <laughs> I feel I feel him <laughs> yeah yeah no I know I get it um well first of all I, I appreciate um you guys you know showing love because um it's easy, you know, inside, like, the the women's basketball space to kind of, like, people, you know, appreciate and see the work you do. Have someone outside looking in who's not affiliated with basketball, women's basketball, the way, you know, me and the players and the parents are. For you guys to be like, oh, this is kind of cool. We want to hear more about it. That's kind of, like, you know, always been – when we talk about, like, kind of growing the game of basketball, whether – no matter, you know, what level it is, high school, college, professionally, like, that's what, like, I look at it. That's what I define it as. It's like – People outside who might not be familiar with it, wanting to be interested and invested in it. So um, I appreciate, you know, even being on here to tell the story. Um, Herb's network, I mean, it's pretty much been, it's, it's kind of like a childhood dream that's like weirdly has come to life in like, the, in like a kind of a random, bizarre way. Um like, when I was a kid, I always, like I said earlier, I was obsessed with basketball. And I was also obsessed with the media side of it. And every morning, and my mom is my witness, every morning before school, I would go run and get the newspaper. This is how old this was back in the day. Was. <laughs> the you newspaper. Got the Boston Globe on the, the front yep. step. Yep. And I would always go to, the, I would go to the sports page in the comic section. My mother would always be like, you want to hear about the other news? Right. You want to hear it? And I'm just like, no, I want to know about the Celtics. I want to know about, like, Garfield. <laughs> Period. That's it. And, like, but I always would read, like, Jack McMullen's columns and Bob Ryan's columns. I want to be like, I, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm like, I never took school seriously. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, one of these pipe dreams. Um, but I went to college. I, you know, studied, you know, communications and media. And um, then once I graduated, you know, I mean, again, like, to get one of those jobs, you got to be, like, have all types of degrees. Bro. It's so competitive. I'm just Bro. like. Dude, there's no way I'm going to start writing. I mean, I always, I always wrote, like, just, I would always just kind of write just to, as a practice, as a hobby, but not just to myself, you know what I mean? Not really to, to promote it or publicize it. And, uh, but once I graduated college, like, I got into construction just because I just needed some money. Uh, I needed to work. And my dad was in construction for, you know, 30 years, worked for the T. And I was just like, you know what, let me just do this, make some money, because, you know, like, dreams aren't coming true. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, And then the pandemic happened. And I remember I was working at the seaport. And um, I remember someone come in saying, we got to leave the job site because of coronavirus. Everyone was like, head down, mm -hmm. going to the parking lot. What am I going to do? Damn. Oh, I lost my job. Me? Cartwheels. High fives all around. <laughs> Get me the hell out this fucking place. <laughs> Thank God. There was like a, such a blessing. I'm like, dude, I hated it. I was miserable for like eight years, bro, Jeez. doing this. Miserable. I'm like, yo, get me out of here, man. Like, so, like everyone, we just start getting bored. You get bored. You're trying to find something to do. I was like writing, like I was watching the Patriots game. This is when we had like Cam Newton. Yeah. I would just, after each Patriots game, I would just write about just, the, just about the game. And I was like, you know, I kind of want to find some kind of like just... A little gig or something, just to kind of like, you know, I felt like inspired again. Yeah. So I just didn't want to find a little gig. I ended up finding like this small writing gig for this company called um, Prep Girls Hoops, and uh, it was just like twenty bucks an article. You write on players, high school players in New England. I was like, this is be fun, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, uh, you know, make twenty bucks an article. So they ended up calling me, and I was just, they were kind of talking to me. I'm just like, hey, like, what do you want me to do? You want me to write a lot, write a little? It's like, do whatever you want to do. Mm. The world is yours. Go ahead. <laughs> and that nice was, and when I heard that, I was like, 
that's the biggest mistake you're going to make. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this $20 an article into an empire. Hey. <laughs> that's and sure. that's all I needed was someone to be, like, not dumb enough, but, like, just be so, like, pedestrian enough to be like, oh, yeah, do whatever you want. Because in the back of my mind, I was like, I was like, this is it. Mm. This is my time to, for my dream when I was a kid to pursue. And then I was the guy I never used social media. I, like, was, like, so, like, I was so isolated. I was, like, an introvert. Like, I was, like, then once I started writing and started getting Twitter and noticed that like the women's basketball community in the New England was showing so much love, I'm like, you guys like this stuff? I was like, okay, I'll keep going. And then, um, so you were posting on social media? Yeah, and stuff? I was like, I was writing for this the website. So the, the the company I was working for was a website. You posted on the website to help like players get exposure. Okay, yeah, uh, get exposure to colleges. And um, I, they were posting my stuff on Twitter and tagged me. I'm just like, because at this point, I didn't really know what Twitter like really was used for as a platform and i was like this is like they like my stuff and then um i ended up going to chicago in july so this is like january 2021 this is a long story but yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah yeah i forgot we was in the studio yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, listen, well, it's well, a very well, interesting well, story so i'm this, engaged this is january 21 that i, I kind of started this and it was july 21 i go to chicago my friend was like hey do you want to go to chicago for this big the nike tournament i was like hell yeah I go, I come back from Chicago, and I'm just like, that sucked. <laughs> it was just boring. I was, I was writing so much, and I was just like, this isn't fun. You know, there's no, there's no, it's just like you write, you post, and there's no, like, pictures, there's no nothing. There's just like, like, where's the fun? Like, I want, to, this should, be for, like, basketball and, like, high school sports, it's so stressful. It's so, like, it's so, like, taxing physically and emotionally and mentally for the players. Like, this is just, like, adding to, this is so vanilla. Like, it doesn't bring, doesn't spark any interest yeah like you know it just kind of it's kind of kind of i saw my work flatlining and i was like i gotta pivot and then i was like um and i was like i, I need i need a photographer i was like, i need to find a photographer to come with me and take pictures so i can so i can like enhance my work so my work doesn't get stale and at the time um this girl who actually, at the time she was 15, she from New Hampshire, she played on an AAU team that I was cool with the coach. And she followed me on Instagram. I followed her back. I kind of knew her because I followed, you know, I, I saw her play and stuff. And her name's Juliet. And I saw that her team was posting pictures. I was like, dude, these pictures are ridiculous. Like, who's taking these? And then I, when I followed her on Instagram, I saw she had a photo account, and I clicked on it. And it was Turf. her taking the pictures. And I was like, this is the kid. I was like, this is a kid who can take my work to the next level. This is the best. This is the most talented kid in New England, period. And I know with her, we can take, I know I can rock it. And I can, like, just, like, go and do my own thing. But I just needed one person, but I was just like, how am I going to get a 15-year-old to buy in? <laughs> you know what I mean? So at the it's time, it was, around, it was actually around this time. I messaged her, and I was like, hey, like, listen, I know you're in Alabama for your AAU tournament. I'm st- I want to start, uh, start my own media site called Her Hoops Network. I, kind of, I just made it up on the spot. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where did, where did you get the, t- I, where did the name come I, I from? What was the inspiration? It, I, I just made it up on the spot. Really? The logo I came up with like in five seconds. Just, I made it up. Like, I just I just think of stuff. I just do it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't. So when, when you when you hit her up, was that the first time you wrote her hoops network? I like, you've I already kind of thought been? of like, I, I was thinking of stuff. But I was just like, you know what? I was just like, I'm going to roll with it. I'm calling her. Because I just had to say something. So I was like, we have to workshop it going down the road. We yeah. will, but like you know, at right now, and it's like, it's not an acronym for nothing. It doesn't like it's just uh, literally no, her hoops network. Okay, I was just like here we go. Um, and she was like, oh my god, this is awesome. Like, I the photography is like my thing, and you know, this is what I want to do. And I end up driving to Dunbar in New Hampshire to meet her parents. And now <laughs> her parents, like, dude, I drank so much carrot juice that day. <laughs> dude, <laughs> what? I'm serious. We were just killing carrot juice at the kitchen table, and I was talking I've about the husband. Never had, had carrot juice. Never had carrot juice. Dude, I Try it. it. It's not. It's I, not bad. I probably have had. It's, it's not bad. But no, I was. Tell, I was just kind of telling like my vision to the parents. They were like, "This is great." And then um, we went to Maine. We shoot an event. We were hit. Then we just started. Like I just started bringing her to different showcases and stuff. And um, we just step, and then that's when I knew. So July twenty twenty one. I didn't like we didn't. It, I wasn't really like my business yet, but I was like, I'm like I'm about. To, that's when I knew the countdown started for me cutting ties with another company. So and I was just counting down the days, and then so oh, th- throughout ahead. this time, you're still just making twenty 
twenty dollars like, an article. article. That's crazy. Yeah. Was, well, you have to understand, writers don't make a lot of money. Right. Freelance yeah. writers don't right. make yeah, money. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like, for sure. I was, but when they said do whatever you want, I was like, Psh, I'm taking this twenty. I'm flipping this. True, like black person form too. Like, <laughs> I'm taking this twenty. I'm flipping this for a bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I'm just like, yo, like, don't like again, like you know, because I I know my talent. I know my work. Mm-hmm. And so then when I started Herb's Network, we started buzzing. They hit me up. Was like. Hey, you know, what's this Herb Network thing going on? I'm just like, oh, you know. Just oh, do they it. hit you. They see they it. They hit you. And this is, that's why I, then they brought me on full time. They're like, oh, you can come on us full time? I'm like, all right, cool, 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 cool. You know, I ended up doing, it was kind of nice. You know, you, you, you know, you do get to do more stuff, you know, um, within the company and stuff like that. So it was, it was cool. But at the same time, I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, this is the Herb's Network. We already got to the steps. I got Juliet locked in. I had other kids reaching out being like, once they saw her work, the other kids were just like, I, I, I want to take pictures too. Mm. Like, come along. Now I, I had like one kid like I'm I'm just big on like if you're talented like I'll give you a shot because I know how it is when you're talented and you try to oh, get a job you try yeah. to get a gig yeah. and everyone's like nah you're not old enough you need more no no you just need talent I'll prove it to you I'll take a I'll take like high school kids and I'll show you that we can we can rock out and we can we can transcend the game just as easy as someone with ten years experience and that's what we did and um you know um and so and I think last October I left I left the company I was with. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. What was that moment where you were like, yeah, I don't need to be a part of um, press, whatever it was called. I, I, I can I, I can branch we, out on my own. We, we ran a couple of events, and I was a big part of getting kids there. I was a big part of kind of like making sure these events kind of happen, and they just were uh, being a little – I didn't like the way they were rolling. Mm. I didn't like the way they were rolling, so I was just like, all right, cool. So I I, I um I do this thing when – um I, I'm not good with working like four people. Like I'm not good with having a boss. I've noticed that over my years. <laughs> uh, I tend to kind of, you know, I, 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 I tend the, to be a little. Uh, I'm the same way. Yeah. So um, I ended up. So I, I after the, after they 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 I got so pissed. I stopped writing. Oh, you said. I got a call from the CEO, and they were like, "Oh, your boy caught in work." And I just like, yeah. Well, it's like, I'm, I, I don't f with y'all. Mm. Like you want to do me dirty? Okay, cool. And they were like, oh, well, you know, you, you know, then they, they, they kind of threw a shot at me talking about I don't impact enough. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Little did they know. That's cool. Impact this. See you later. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, see you later. And I was like, and then, you know, and um, so then October, October, I left. And again, like, I don't, it's not, no, no beef or anything like that. Yeah. Like, they're going to do fine. I'll do fine. But you got to do what's best for yourself. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, everything's, if you're, if you're, if you're not on the same frequency with people, you kind of have to like. Break away. I think that's fine, you know. Um, but I ended up uh, leaving, and I was like, okay, you know, I don't, I don't, we don't impact enough. Okay, Roger that. I went and created my own site, um, which, la- which launched that in November. Um, and then uh, we were kind of off to the races. I was just doing the same thing I was always doing, the writing and stuff like that. But I could be able to do my own thing and kind of dictate, you know. Kind of, I could dictate everything and not the other way around. People were telling me what to do. I could be like, okay, I, I'm the captain of my own ship. And listening, listen to your story is, first of all, a lot of things you just said is you're downplaying how amazing. Yeah, it, it really, sure. it, it really is. And we're going, we're going to get to that. But listen to your story. I learned along the way that you can go into two paths. How you lead yourself, you can lead yourself into fear. Or you can lead in yourself into trust. You talk about how once the construction thing went down, I'm out, peace. Everyone's <laughs> like, "What the hell am I do?" You, I'm, I'm golden. You, you see that things are things are looking kind of shaky with what you're doing. Impress, you're like, "Bet, I'm out, peace. I know I'm gonna be good." You, you, you give off a lot of confidence in within yourself and how how you're gonna go about it. Saying you not once did you mention with us, and there probably was doubt, but not once have you mentioned with us, "Yo, I, I wasn't sure this was gonna." go through you've been speaking with a lot of confidence where does that come from um well i mean there is doubt and there is i mean listen i was i was i was scared you know i when construct when we, the, the lockdown happened i was like damn, what am i gonna do you know when i left you know the the other company i was like dang what am i what am i gonna do but if you surround yourself with the right people like sometimes that helps like when i left you know to start my own thing i had one one friend in particular they were like, you know, I'm, I'm really intrigued what you're going to do next. Well, everyone was just like, what are you doing? You can't leave. That's right. a big mistake. 
in the end, and, and this person was just like, nah, like, well, I'm intrigued what you're going to do. And I was, that's all I needed just to kind of get that, that spark back. And I was like, all right, cool, we can keep it pushing. But I think where it comes from, I think I get it from my mom. Like, my, my mom's one of the, the strongest people I've ever met. And, I mean, she just, I mean, she's the queen of just, like, I mean, she's seen some stuff, or she's been through some stuff. Move your mic over. Oh, she, I mean, she, she, she's, um, she, she's, been, she's been through some stuff. She's seen some stuff. And she just always just keeps it pushing. And when you watch that, like, someone that you're, you know, that you're around as much as, like, your mother is, I'm sure you guys are, you know, yeah. type with your, with your, with your family, something like that, you know, it's just, when you see them on a daily basis, you're just, like, it's, like, inspiring, and then it's just, like, it's also, you also learn from that, you're just, like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, this is the example here, you know, my mother always led by example, and it was really soft-spoken, still soft-spoken, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, no, she always, you know, when things happen, she heads up, keeps it pushing, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, sure. I think I think that's probably where I get it from. Where it's just like I, you know, hey, pandemic happens, we're gonna keep walking, we're gonna figure it out. You know, lose a job, get a new one, we'll figure it out. You know, so um, I would say that's probably where where it comes that's from. Dope. That's really dope. That's a great mindset to have. I mean, obviously, yeah, I think when anybody's trying to make moves similar to what you're doing, the doubt is gonna be there because you know you got to figure stuff out. You want to know how things are gonna unfold and what's gonna happen next, but. You know, the good thing, a lot of the good thing about what you said is, you know, once you're locked in, you had that determination, you knew nothing was necessarily going to stop you. You're just going to push through it. What you want to do next, you know, picking up the new thing, picking up uh, the next thing that you're interested in. Um, but I definitely want to ask you about, you know, once you finally made that separation and you knew that you were taking on this this network on your own you came up with her hoops on the spot. You said you came up with the logo and design on the spot. Didn't, you know, think twice and too much about it. <clears throat> Once you had this whole entity as your own now, what did you feel? Or how was it separate from what you were doing before? Like, what did you say? Okay. I was doing this before with, with the press company, but now that I have her hoops, this is what we're going to be about. Like when people ask you, hey, what's Her Hoops Network all about? What do you tell them? Like what do you sell them on? You know, what is, you know, <clears throat> that opening line that you give people? Um, well, my, my goal first and foremost is to always help kids get to the next level. Um, I think um, like as, as a, someone who played college basketball and knowing how hard it was to get recruited myself, like you don't know this. I was getting recruited for D1 football. Before really? I got recruited for basketball, really, oh, I had Why? I, I had a lot of because I was athletic. Yeah, that is true. So every so they were like, <laughs> well, so you so, so wasn't playing football like you that? Didn't, you I, didn't, I didn't play, play pass, Wait, time out. You didn't time play time college. Time I mean, no, high no, school no, no, football. No, 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 you didn't play for the high school. I would get I would get questions. People were like, you didn't play for football team. People wanted me to play football because they were like, dude, if you play football, you'll be a D one kid. You'll be a D one wide receiver. You can go to college for free. No, this still he was a freak athlete. I guess I played I played ball with them once. You probably won't remember. I remember, but. You didn't play football once, and you were still getting D one offers. Dude, my, 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 no, I didn't, I didn't get offers. I got, I got, I got interest in people. Interest did, from D yeah, ones, and, and because people were just like, "Hey, like, there's this kid who doesn't get his, his recruiting's low in basketball, but he's a freak athlete." That's how it would start. So they're just like, "Hey, That's play, go play crazy. football. Wow. See how I didn't it know goes, that. and you could be a, a you could be a D one scholarship level wide wide receiver." I just surely as a team, did just not go, know that. Go run the field, just jump. Right. Just that guy, you know what I mean? And, but I never had passion for football. Basketball was my thing. So, but um, but I know how hard it is to get recruited, and you know it, it's so competitive out there, especially in basketball. So, um, yeah. So my my goal is always like, how can I help a kid get to the next level? So whether it's you know through my writing, whether it's through my clinics that I run, through through my events, how can I connect them with college coaches and um, vice versa, and um, make the recruiting process easier for them. And how can I make it fun? Like, like I said, like when I was when I when I was a kid, it was basketball and comics. So mm -hmm. I incorporate the comic side into the basketball stuff. So you yeah, know, I see that with my, your posts you, and if stuff. You notice my post is always it's never just it's never just basketball. I try to make mm -hmm. it like a pop culture reference. I try to make because I just think that it's like okay, how can like for the people who don't like basketball, how can I still catch their eye? Can can I can I can I get someone invested in the women's game if you're not a basketball fan? So again, like I like New Girl, the show. So I I, I told my friend to make a, I told her to make a graphic, a New Girl graphic for New Prospects on my radar. And now everyone's just like that New Girl graphic, you know? Like I love that show. Like they don't know anything about these girls that I'm talking about, but they they'll, they'll have a conversation about it. Like what is this? 
just because they like New Girl. Mm. We had that common interest of just a TV show. Um, so I try to do stuff like that just to make, but also just to make it fun because it, it can get kind of boring. It can get stale. So you got to have to come up with ideas to kind of keep um, yourself invested. Yeah. You know? So how so how long ha- now have you been invested or been working around women basketball? Um, about two years now. About about yeah. two about two years. Two, years, two plus years. Two and what, a half. What can you teach us about just what you've learned and observed through women? Women sports and women basketball that there's maybe a misconception or people don't even really That's understand. A good question. I like that question you know, a lot. When it um, comes to when it comes to that league, since you're in it every day and you see it. Um, I mean super competitive. Um, I mean just when you watch it up close, seeing some of the when you especially when you travel on the road and you see some of the different regions compete, you see the size, the shooting. I mean, the, the women's I mean, they can really shoot. And that's one of the skill sets I think they they have over men's is that they they can shoot from um they're just more efficient shooters um, because a lot of times in men like again like for me it's like I could just get downhill and dunk and jump over mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> women's game you have to be a little more strategic and that's what makes it fun because you have to kind of scheme more it's more of like a I don't know it, it's 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 just it's just it's just more intriguing to watch I guess in that sense of just like how the the how like how you have to execute. And that's what I'm kind of into. And that's why I always kind of invest into the women's game. I used to watch, like, as a kid, used to watch the WNBA and, like, NCAA tournament and stuff like that. Just because I'm just a hoop. I'm just a basketball yeah. nut. So I'll just yeah. watch anything on TV that's, you know, people shooting hoops. Because yeah, we don't really think, like, I'm surrounded by coaches all the time who have kids. And they talk about – and. AAU, they talk about their kids going to AAU tournaments and stuff, and these are all boys leagues. I never even thought about, like, oh, yeah, like, when you just mentioned Shorty was in Alabama for AAU tournaments, like, wow, yeah, they have that as well. They have their own AAU tournament. Obviously, it doesn't get as highlighted um, at that at that age, but it's, it's really interesting to see that, you know, it's just as competitive, it's just as f- fiery over there. So that's that's really dope to see from learning from your perspective. Sure. Have you ever – have you ever – Thought about expanding expanding to to the boys get side of things? No, so it's funny. I, I used to I wrote for a little bit for the boys when I first started, mm-hmm. and they weren't rocking with me. Oh, they weren't <laughs> rock, the girls were rocking with me. Why do you think that was though? I mean, I mean, my my work's not for everybody, so you know what I mean. It's just simple as that. I don't think it was anything you know malicious. It's just right. like some people rock with you, some people don't. Some people like Beyonce, some people don't. <laughs> Well, Beyonce's not going to perform for people who aren't her fans. Yeah, not yeah. people who rock with her. So it's just like that's just kind of like how it goes. And the girls' basketball side, like they were, um, they were really invested in my work, and they they showed love. So I was just like, oh, I'll just rock with you guys, and let's keep building this thing. And you know, I just try to help as much as um, as much as I could. All right. So here's what I want to do because I definitely think we could dive much deeper into this this conversation and learn a lot more about her hoops. Um, but I think we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back from the break, you know, we've heard a lot about what's happening right now, but maybe we could dive into what possibly the future could look like for you and her hoops and what could be coming down the road for you. Because I think what you have going on right now is amazing and there's a lot more that could come, but you know, double M's going to take a quick break. When we get back, we got more from bash. So keep rocking with us and stay tuned. And we're back. Episode 130, special guest here, Bash from Her Hoop Networks, man. We've been, you've been taking us on a journey. You've been taking us on a journey from the beginning. Then we went to, went to the pandemic. Then I found myself in Chicago. It's been, it's been really dope, man. You, you're a dope storyteller. But now that, let's move into the current times and, you know, Her, Her Hoop Networks. What are we doing now? What is Her Hoops Network all about right now? Um, right now, um, I've been, I've been getting, I've been running a lot of events and like clinics and stuff. Um, little fun thing about me is that like, I never wanted to coach. Right. Like really? I, I just always, it's just like never, I'd never been passionate about it. I never wanted to have like, I didn't, I like loved the coaching aspect. I just didn't want what came with it, you know, like just the responsibility of it. But my clinics, it kind of allows me to kind of scratch that itch. Like, get a group of kids and, like, kind of teach them the game. And I'm big on teaching concepts. So a lot of things that I see evaluating from, like, the, the bleachers, I'm just like, hey, this is what I see you guys doing, you know, habits you're picking up. This is how we fix them. You know, so when they get on the road and they're in front of college coaches, they can – because a lot of kids are like, why am I not getting recruited? Well, be, 
because like you know you might be talented but you're just not doing things to separate yourself from all the other competition out there so i try to emphasize certain concepts throughout the game through the game to kind of help them out and so um so, but right now i mean outside of traveling and just covering you know um the players on the road um also getting ready for um a couple of events big events one for um incoming eighth graders and freshmen in august and i got a big one um called harassic park mm-hmm. <laughs> in september um, so dope so, name, yeah, dope name. Just, and this, that's what I do. I try to make everything kind of like yeah. different. I don't really like, you know, I, I could just easily call it like a, the Bash Hoops Fall Showcase. But that's boring. Yeah, you know but, what, see, what you mean. But you guys are, so you're running all these clinics. You guys are established now. You guys yeah. are really getting people to come into these clinics. And I'm guessing you're not the only one doing the coaching as well. You probably have uh, other people. It's, 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 uh, it's so most, most you got to talk about it, man. Stop being so humble. We got to know <laughs> what's going I mean, on. It's, it's most, most, of it's, most of it's just me. Um, I know I, I do all the social media stuff. I do. I mean, I, I do. I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty picky about who I choose. Like, I like handpick everybody. Like, Juliet, I handpicked. Um, like, my, my friend... Um, my friend Maddie, my friend Anna, like I handpicked to help them run my clinic, stuff like that. Nice. Like, if they can't do it, I'll do it myself. You know what I mean? But I'm always big on just like, hey, like I want to get people involved in stuff, uh, people who supported me, people who um, are in- interested in her hoops. I want to keep them in- engaged and involved if they can. And if they can't, then I'll just do it. I'll just, you know, I'll do it myself. But um, but no, I, I do a lot of stuff just like, it's funny you said like you guys are established. Like, nah, like <laughs> most of the time it's just me, solo. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, people contribute here and there, but you know, like most, of, I, I kind of, it's kind of a one man, one man show for now. I mean, you know what I mean. It's early on, you know. So that's see, that's, see that's incredible. <laughs> do you do you take note and really see, you know, what having these clinics and you know stepping into the coaching role a little bit? Do you start to take notice of, you know, the 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 kids really? T- being appreciative of the knowledge and the opportunities uh, that you're providing for them? Because maybe for some of these kids, I don't know, have they ever been to a clinic before? Maybe something brand new to them. Do you really start to take notice of the fact that you're having an impact in terms of providing these opportunities for these kids? Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's one of those things where, like, when I first did them, I was just like, oh, how are these going to go? Yeah. You no, know, these could bomb or these could be really good. And then, Parents and kids are just like, yeah, we would do another one. I was like, what? Because <laughs> I'm like naturally negative. So like I, <laughs> I'm naturally like glass half empty. So every time I do something, I'm just like, oh, that sucked. But that's what kind of keeps me going and keeps me like bringing out these ideas like Harassic Park. Yeah. Yep, I was like, yep. oh, this idea kind of stinks. Let me try to, you know, go back to the drawing board and do something else. But the kids are really, they really liked it. And, um, and so it helps me kind of go back to the, the drawing board and, okay, okay, what can I add? What can I take out to make this a better experience, you know, to make it more challenging, to make it more fun? And um, so, um, but, yeah, no, the, the kids, the kids seem to like it. And, and I, tell, I tell whoever works with me, um, whoever, and I tell the kids, if you don't like something, just say it. Right. I don't care if you guys think something sucks. Let me know it sucks so I can make it not suck the next time. Like, I tell, I tell Juliet, like, every time we go out, like, you know, after an event, what'd you hate? Who, who, did, who did we hate? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, what, I, I, know, I, know, I know we're going to rock it. I know we're going to do well. I know your pictures are going to be fire. We're going to post. It's going to be all gravy. But, like, what went wrong? What can I do to make this a better experience for you? That's how you grow. Yep. You know what I mean? I don't need my ass kissed. I don't need people to tell me I'm great. Like I, I I know like I know what I bring to the table, so I know I know if an idea is good I, and it's gonna be a hit. I know when it stinks. I need to just kind of okay that wasn't a that wasn't a hit, so let me just kind of you know go back to you know square one. But like I want people to tell me like hey like uh, you know and, and that the thing about girls basketball they'll be honest with you. Oh they'll, they'll let you know when something sucks. <laughs> the girls won't yeah, hold back. Oh yeah, back. yeah they'll, they'll be like back. yeah that was whack. <laughs> 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 that was corny. But I appreciate it cuz it's again like you know it's about them, you know. So I want to make sure the experience is um uh, worthwhile, worth their while. So like what do I care, you know what I mean? I'm just providing the platform for them. Um, it's it's interesting to hear about because you know obviously I do a little I do a little coaching on the side too and one thing that you just said especially with the girls they won't hesitate in letting you know their thoughts and feelings on something that you're doing or a drill or an activity, like they'll won't hold back. You know, fellas 
are more so just ready to be like, yes, coach, you want us to do this? Okay, like, they might say it behind your back with their fellas, like, yo, that, that shit was kind of whack. But girls will be like, nah, this ain't it. So I get what you mean a little bit on that on that um, side of things. Um, but we could transition a little bit because it sounds like you got, you already see what's kind of in front of you. Like you said, you have Jurassic Park coming up uh, in the fall, you said. Um, but just in terms of more opportunities, more ideas, if you were to just put a map out in front of you and, and, and think about what's next, what's coming on later 2023, what's maybe popping off, you know, to kick off 2024. Because, I mean, obviously, um, I know for high school basketball, it really gets popping fall, winter time. I mean, when those most high school leagues are going on, but obviously you have different clinics and whatnot going on. But what are some things you may be envisioning, even if you have to dream big? Like, you got something great going on right now. We've established that here in your story and everything. But if you have to dream really big and wild and, and to see what could happen next, what's some things that you have in mind that aren't out of the realm of possibility, but you reaching for whatever you want to reach for? Um. Well, I mean, continue. I mean, thing about my my gig is that like I can continue what I'm doing and just kind of improvise as we go along to kind of like build it and grow. Um, but if I had to dream big, you know, like when I started doing these events, you know, like the most annoying part is trying to find a gym, mm. a gym space. You know what I mean? I like, I, I mean, you, I mean, everyone knows, I like, you try to do struggle. anything, trying to find a venue, <laughs> venue sucks. sucks. Yeah. And then, like, when you find a venue, you gotta, you have to have some documents, you gotta pay. And it's just like, oh, yeah, God. Yeah. So, I always, I, I wanna open, like, Her Hoops headquarters. Whew. Give me a little I headquarters. Like that. Give me, list, give me, like, some, like, garage so I can hold a court. I and like I have that. an office for, like, my stuff. And I'm good. I like that. I mean, you know, we're, we're, talk back to me when, like, you know, in, like, few years and I kind of get some money to do that but like I just think that having a space to kind of where I can hold events and kids can play and I don't have to worry about like you know trying to rent space or try to you know talk to an AD of a school you know it's just like I like you know, that um, so that that's probably I mean I mean I'm just kind of off the top of the dome so no, I'm that's cool on. that's cool that's exactly what we want but um but yeah that, that'll probably and it's, it's possible like I know you you said talk to you in a couple of years and it may seem like it's far fresh, but you're you look everything's trending upwards upwards to you and um with the business that you're doing. I know you start looking into grants and you know, you start looking into all of that. These things aren't impossible, which which what you're talking about and the impact that you're making. So um, you know, keep keep shooting for that. I don't doubt. Yeah, no, I, I definitely um I definitely that's definitely something that I kind of want to invest in going down the road. So it is up in the back of my mind. Like, you know, that's always just kind of like a goal. It becomes more clear when I have to keep going from gym to gym. <laughs> trying to I push know spots. how that can go. Um, it's, it's tiring. I know how that can go. <laughs> Ven yeah. Venues, venues is, is tiring. Have you, have you seen yourself, you know, now you've been in this really for like two plus years. How have you grown professionally? Um, I'm definitely more out. I, I'm definitely more outspoken. I guess I'm definitely more personable. I'm just happier. You know, I mean, you're you doing something you love. Like, like you don't, enjoy. You, you don't realize, like, you don't realize how like miserable you are until you're happy. It's weird, <laughs> right? Like when you're in the trenches, you don't really. Yeah, see, yeah. like like again, like I me mean, being construction, and like right before I started construction, though Mike knows this, my dad passed, mm -hmm. and you don't realize how much that took a toll on you until like you're in a, a happy space. You're just like, holy shit! Like I was a mess. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you all you do is just you know go to work, play Call of Duty, you know, gamble. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just do pick up bad habits. And like now I'm like in a space where I'm just like, I haven't touched an Xbox controller in like two, three years. She. I haven't bet on a, a, a sports game in two, three years. Like ever since I started really pursuing like f and pursuing my dream and finding my happiness, it's just like, dude, I don't need much, you know? And um, so it's just like, yeah, it's just, you know. That's dope, man. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, of course. No, oh, that's what's up. Um, Yeah. I love everything I'm hearing and everything you're doing, obviously, going back long time with you, you know, 
I'm happy to hear it. I'm proud to see it. Shout know. out to New Balance. Shout out to New Balance. They, they sponsored y'all. What's the word here? You got yeah. New Balance, everything. I had to sneak that plug in because I know we didn't talk about it yet. Okay. You got the <laughs> suck. You, 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 been, you been kicking it with Kawhi, bro? Nah. No, um, the, the new So I, I forgot to mention it because, you know, I mean, I was story time with Bash for like, you know, 20 minutes. So New Balance hit me. That's when I knew it was up. Like, when after I hit up Juliet, this is like 21, I get a call. From New Balance. New Balance, okay. So but my guy from New Balance goes, you know, I'm looking, you know, hey, are you bash? Or it was like a text, it was like a group chat or something like that. It was a text. And he got on a call and just like, hey, like, you know, I heard that, you know, you, you know, were a guy to talk to, like, a, you know, for the women's basketball space. We're trying to, like, link with, um, you know, other women's, you know, girls' basketball AAU programs. And, you know, New Balance is right in, right in Boston. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're local. Um, and, you know, I was kind of telling about her hoops network. They were like, we can, you know, we can partner together and, you know, we can uh, get you a store and kind of, so they, so they. Mad nonchalant. <laughs> right. And, and then um, I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And um, I ended up just being like a walking billboard. That's what's up. And so. It's major. Yeah. And so then. That's they major. Were, yeah. They was like, all of a sudden, like, I mean, I was, I mean, I'm no joke. Like, this is how, like, like, this is how, like, bummy I was for, like, a good decade. Like I only I would only have like one pair of sneakers. I would always just go and buy like I was always wearing work boots. Mm. I had like three pairs of work boots depending on like um depending on the uh what kind of weather was outside and I had one pair of sneakers just to kind of rock. It was some pair from like you know, DSW. Whatever was like twenty five bucks. New balance hit me up. Bro, you, you up right <laughs> New now. New balance oh, everything. Dude, it's like, right yo, I, I get, you know, I got the Zach Levines. I got the Kawhi. <laughs> wow. You in you there. Know, I'm just like, yo, like, I want more sneakers. I want more gear. So, I, I, you know, I became, you know, big into, like, you know, sneakers. And um, and then they, so they, 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 they customize all my stuff for, like, my events. They customize all my jerseys for my events. So, like, yeah, did they, um... Just show the camera, Mike. Show yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got the bag. I've been waiting for this bag forever. Yeesh. I've been waiting for this bag, man, for like a month of Sundays. That's dope. That's but really um, dope. but yeah, no, New Balance. I mean, they they have really comfortable basketball kicks. I mean, they're really in um, they're really like invested into the basketball stuff. So it's not just like how it was like back when we were kids, where it was just like old people. Yeah, just wore New Balance. <laughs> they really, you know, um, they really stepped up their game. So um, and they're they're great people, you know. They um, so I like rocking with them. Okay. I'm not gonna tell him no. No. I yeah, mean, keep it keep it coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how, 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 how many how many writers like are partnered with like a shoe company? Nah, man. I'm you like, dude, that. I'm 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 milking this cow. You got that in, in I'm my like, dude, like, yeah, whatever you guys need me to do. <laughs> Sooner or later, this dude's gonna tell us you had dinner with Kawhi at, at one of their meetings right, or no, something. Go to one of the, the new balances, galas. Yep, or something you're gonna be like at a gala with Kawhi, I'll be bro. Hanging, hanging with Jack Harlow. Oh, whoever <laughs> I don't even know who else who New Balance we got hope, signed like yeah. that, but uh, yeah, yo, it's amazing, man. It's amazing everything you got going on. Everything you kind of—it's interesting story. You kind of took an opportunity that that company gave you, and like you said, you said, "Okay, you gonna give me this for twenty dollars? Watch what the watch what I'm about to do with it." And you spun it, you turned it into your own, and now you you're blowing up. You're blowing up with her hoops network, and it's amazing to see. But I gotta ask you because again, I think I was saying this before. We go way back, and I know the basketball story from way back when, but what is Bash, the basketball player, doing now? I know I try to be in my little men's league and this and that and stay active. The what basket- are you doing? The basketball player? Yes. <laughs> Do I stink? No way. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I, I, I can I can, st- I can still dunk. Um, you I haven't can, played in any leagues? No. I haven't played in a league since um the last league, I guess, that we played in, which was Sheesh. like seven years ago. I mean, I'll play like in the gym and stuff. I, I, in my clinics, I'll play. Okay. Need an extra, you know, and dude, I be getting cooked. Well, you can't play with the young kids. I, I, I do. Like, <laughs> like, dude. It's not the same no it's more. Not the same. I, I, I caught, I caught uh, like a shoulder from this girl from Turkey. I was oh. her. She was like six feet, just like, yo. What was her she, name? Helga. No, nah, she was. Uh, <laughs> Um, so she she hit me with like <laughs> she hit me with her oh, shoulder. Through, he's through. a Helga. <laughs> and I, 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 I knew was, a girl from from Turkey named Helga. I was, I was like I was like dude like I can't I can't I can't do this anymore man like <laughs> I'm thirty I'm thirty one yeah, you know man. what I mean like what are we doing I I can't play with these kids anymore I'm done. Nah I feel you I definitely tried to play ball even 
within a couple of days ago, I think I tried to just go play pickup at the Y with a couple of high school kids. Probably one of the worst decisions I made. You can't do in it in twenty twenty three. You can't do it, especially because like, <laughs> I, like I'm also I'm also like a dad. I got a four year old daughter. Shout and out now, to you. Yeah, yeah, she, 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 she she's a, she's a peach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, she she she's great. Um, but um, yeah. So it's just like I mean, again, like. It's just like when once you're done, like I got her like you know Monday through Wednesday every other week, and once you're done with her, I just need some time just to chill. <laughs> I don't need to play basketball, man. Like it's like we're, the, that ages you about like five, six, especially when you're like, doing it by yourself. It's like, yeah. dude, it's like okay, like it's just you know because like, you gotta take her out to eat, you gotta take her. It's just like what well, that exhausts you enough. So it's like mm. I'm good. No Understood. more. I don't want to I mean, be you're still around the game. So that's it's it. Not yeah, like that's you, that. It's not like you miss it too that's much, it, man. You know, it's like. I'm there every day. Understood. Understood for sure. Um, we could switch gears just a tad bit before we continue to march through and, and wrap up this episode, but I know you locked in with everything, her hoops. But I got to ask you, I know, Mar, we're going to get into this probably a little bit. Your thoughts and feelings on the Boston Celtics? Because we used to... We were in high school when they won the last yeah, championship. The championship. And I remember yeah. coming to school that next day, and you, me, a bunch of us in the cafeteria just yeah. going, wow, we, we, we've seen a couple of championships. We've seen Red Sox 04. The Patriots. Patri- all the Patriots. All a couple of Patriots. The Celtics 08. Um, but your thoughts and feelings quickly on this current, because we haven't talked basketball yeah, in we years. We haven't, yeah. Your th- overall, your thoughts and feelings on this current era of this Tatum Brown era? And I mean, again, a, a negative bash is just, <laughs> it just always comes out. I mean, I was when we were playing the Heat this year. This year, yep. we went down three zero. You have no idea how bad I was rooting for the sweep. <laughs> get, let's get. I was hoping Jimmy Butler send us home. <laughs> you want us out of our misery because I knew if we won Game Four, we were going to force to a Game Seven in those. A holes we're gonna lose in game seven at home because that's who the Celtics always are. Ah, that's who they are. They're, yeah. they're, gonna, right. they're just they're just gonna like they're gonna get you hooked. And they got me. Let you down. They got me bad. They got me too. I was they got like, me. Oh. <laughs> they got me <laughs> bad. They, got, I, they won me over for like a, a couple seconds. Then game seven happened, and yeah. then like Tatum got hurt. They got and me then bad. Brown just couldn't dribble with his left hand. I was just like, this is <laughs> these assholes did it again. <laughs> like they just keep doing this. Like, but like. I do like the Porzingis trade. Marcus Smart had to go. Okay, so you on that side you, of things. You have to change the culture. We're, we're going to keep bringing back the same cast of clowns and expect a different result. You're going to keep losing. I like this guy. You're yeah. going to keep losing. Like, that's not how, like, it's just, it's wild. I mean, again, I know Marcus Smart's You like, didn't think he was part of the core that needed to just build around the core and they could get over the hump? You know, you know, you know who you say that about? Kevin Garnett, champion. You know who you say that about? <laughs> like, even, like, I would say that about, like, I don't, like... I, like Draymond Green, champion. Mm. A guy who's won zero rings and has failed every time there's a big moment in the playoffs. What is he like? What, what has Marcus Smart done? And I like the guy. I like the player. God, but like, you can't do all that and just say I like the guy. I like, no, 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 no. no. I, I, Let him no, cook. I'm, 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 Let him cook. No, I, I like, I like the, like, I like the, the player. Like, I like what he stands for, what he's about. But it's just like you can't like keep bringing back the same thing because you're not going to trade Tatum or Brown. So who's gonna go? Like th- that's a significant piece. That you're gonna get something back in return that's gonna make yeah, you. It makes you know that was, makes sense. was the only thing you could do. Because what, what are you gonna get for Grant Williams? Like a, a some pocket lint? <laughs> you're gonna get nothing. Oh but man! But in order to get someone like Porzingis, you have to trade someone like Marcus Smart, or you gotta trade Jalen Brown, and then that would have started the whole thing. Yeah. So it's just like either way, we're gonna be pissed off because we traded somebody. Yeah. It it, it sucks. Um, yeah, the state of Celtics is really it's just awful. really shaky, especially <laughs> as we record today. This is episode 130. It's been 130 days, and Jalen Brown still hasn't signed his extension. Um, so, and anyone who says they think they know what's going on is lying. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because it it sounded like when the playoffs ended, this was going to be. Celtics number one priority. Just yeah. get this extension done. It's gonna suck. It's gonna be so much money, but we have to. We have to lock it in. We are almost in August. Well, and, and here's the thing: if we're not gonna pay Jalen Brown, would you trade Marcus Smart for? <laughs> like, if, if Jalen yeah. Brown ends up leaving, it's just like, well, just keep Marcus Smart. Like, like, I, so I don't, I don't know the direction. I think, I think my frustration is like, what's the direction? So at first, I was like, oh, we're trading Marcus Smart because we want to pay Jalen Brown. We gotta get rid of some money. 
But now we're like we're like kind of like hesitant about Jalen Brown. So I'm like, but the thing is. The money had nothing to do with Marcus Smart. Had we traded Brogdon, it would have been because of money. He's still on the team? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought we got rid of him. Brogdon's nah. on the team. So if Brogdon <laughs> had left, then you then you're what makes because Brogdon's the one with the the money. Oh. Smart. Smart like, was already signed in. I like Brogdon. I wish he was obviously yeah. health health killed us in the playoffs. But he I was, like Brogdon. He's fine. He said he's fine. This is a six man of the year. I look, like Brogdon when how, Marcus Smart's on the team because how do you look in the tough. playoffs? He played hurt. That's that's why a yeah, lot of but people. But like he's like really slow. When the game speeds up, you watch him. Nah. It's just like, dude, like you don't. What are you really giving us? That's like Brogdon. People yeah. are on Brogdon's case right now because he tried to play through a significant arm injury Maybe. that literally really was it really hampered him, and obviously. Celtics had opportunity to make it to the finals. He tried to push through and play, but he made the wrong choice, and he should have probably sat. Um, but now that's why uh, I hear the money thing that Mar brought up, obviously, but I think a lot of people have some slight issue with Brogdon because, oh, well, he didn't perform in the playoffs. I'm like, yo, he played with, like, one I, arm. I, I just don't like his game. I think his really? game. I, just, I think his game doesn't translate to the playoffs because he's too slow. Like, look how, look how slow his shot is. And he's like, he's a, your defend. If I'm Brogdon, the, the fan has to be the defender for him to get a shot <laughs> off in the playoffs. The game's too fast for him. He has an interesting, he has an interesting so form. And then he doesn't really, like, he's not, like, a, a good, like, distributor. He can defend. Well, if you ask Marv, Marv believes so, that the Celtics didn't use him correctly. And I'll let Marv okay. elaborate on yeah. that. I think Celtics used him as a shooter. They used him mm. as a gun, a gunner. Well, they should have used him more of a, as a point. When they brought Malcolm Brogdon in, I thought he was going to be the Celtics' primary ball hitter. That's all they would say. You know, Tatum and Brown struggled with turnovers. Now you have Malcolm Brogdon in <laughs> to really help. Brogdon wasn't used as that to the point. Brogdon started turning the ball over crazy because he was no longer that guy to bring the ball over up up the court. They started just using him as a gunner, as a guy. You have him in the pick and roll, pick and pop. That's what Brogdon well, became, which was weird. Well, does that, it worked for him. He won is, six men. Is that different? Yeah, but see, I also think that's on the coach too. I think Missoula. Oh, I think Missoula. A lot of coach. If we, if we had if we had Udoka, if Udoka could just like keep it in the pants, <laughs> say it all the time. That nut. Seriously, he's gonna have a party in Houston. By the way, he has a oh, nice he, little I, young I know, squad I know, over I know, there. I know why he. I'm not. I'm not he talking not about. Talk, oh, you talk, about, about, the, talk the, about a different dude, type of party, bro. Same reason why Zion said he liked yeah. Houston, <laughs> and he's trying to get James Harden to get back in uh, to get those those two. In, uh, in Houston, but no, oh. I, I just think Missoula's like he's big on just shooting threes, yeah. and I, so I, I think to your point, I think that's probably true of that like he wants three point shooters, he wants to shoot a lot of threes, like, and um, I, I think and I think that's like I mean that's an easy way to die in the NBA unless you have like Steph Curry, and even when you have Steph and Clay, like you go up against like a LeBron type player or you know someone like that, it's like that can that might not always work. So, well, you know. I'm curious to see what the Celtics continue to do. Last thing I read, I think, as of today as we're recording, is just the fact that, you know, a lot, a lot of people felt that Missoula was maybe on a hot seat with how the season ended. And according to whatever article I read from whatever sports insider, Missoula was never on the hot seat. Brad is fully all in on Joe Missoula. And I guess Missoula in Brad's mind is the the next in, uh, the next – you know, incarnation of him in terms as a coach. Because when Brad coached, all he wanted is space in the shooting, space in the shooting, space in the shooting. Right, Brad's going to find himself out of Boston if he, and if he has I, that mentality. Literally, the article that I read said Brad sees himself in Joe Missoula where all he wants the team to really do is focus on spacing and shooting, not too much on defense, but more so spacing and shooting with the offense. Okay. And I read that, and I'm like, I, like you just said, if that's really the mindset that he's trying to bring to this team – not everybody's a Steph Curry in the Golden State Warriors. It doesn't always work like that. But, but so. I, I, I want to know, what does Jason Tatum think? Because I'm sorry. In the NBA, it's not about the coach or the GM. It's about what does the best player think. We're trying to keep him happy. He's the guy who's going to leave. I, we, we can, I mean, You're a little J soft. I'm not too worried about Jason I mean, Tatum. <laughs> Jason, to that's me, crazy. I'm like. <laughs> Throw I mean, him a little bread. He'll be all right. Yeah, I mean, that's what my thing is. Like, does Jason Tatum, like, if Jason Tatum's like, I love Missoula. He's my guy. I keep Missoula. Keep Tatum happy because if Tatum leaves, we're screwed. <laughs> so we got. I mean, Tatum to me, like his. I mean, he's frustrating, but like, he's still like a top five ish player in the league. Which is he crazy. he he lacking a little something for me. Doesn't not, not like, that what, killer what, what, lock in like, instinct from but Jason like, talent Tatum? Wise, like oh, ta he's how talented. Many, how many six nine guys can like just 
pull he's, up. Talent wise, like, he can be the best player. He yeah. has the best so player in just, the world. Talent. So we gotta kind of just like it's frustrating. I, yeah. I trust me, yeah, it's yeah, frustrating. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, well, who else we gonna get? Besides? Like we gotta got the guy. So it's like to the point where we we're thinking about not paying Jalen Brown because we're just like, well, we have Tatum, and we have Porzingis. You know what I mean? That's probably what they're thinking. Is just like, well. If we lose Brown, like we'll, we'll just get a couple pieces and we hope Tatum takes. You know what I mean? If they're I, smart, I think. I think they know, don't I mean, lose I, I think Brown. The thing, Tatum. the thing is, Brown's not going anywhere this year, regardless of what happens with this mm. extension or anything. Brown is still locked in for the for this year. It can hold an ugly it, cloud it, over the it, season. It's going to make it an awkward. Year. It's going to be an yeah. awkward season. Yeah, yeah. they got to try to handle that. It's going to be a very awkward season. I mean, they have till October. It should have never. It just should have never been going on, but. If Brown doesn't get his extension, he's still a Celtic this year. And all year, especially Boston media, oh, it's going to be that Kevin day. Durant situation when his last year in Golden State. What you doing? What you doing? What you what's about do? to happen? What, you, what, what you, do? do? you think if he if the Celtics win this year, he'll stay? If the Celtics were to pull out a championship with without the extension, and so if he if if Jalen Brown doesn't get the extension, he has to play out this year, and the Celtics win, will he stay? It's a nope. great question. I'd still be 50-50 because yeah, now he great got the question. chip. So even if right now he has an idea of, mm, do That's I want to stay in question. Boston, do I want to go? If he were to get the championship, and now he plays he, well. And he plays and well. Now he could be like, yeah. well, I don't necessarily – I got the chip. Now I could just go to where I would necessarily want to go. And all of a sudden Celtics don't necessarily – or not necessarily the team that can pay him the most anymore. Yeah. that's It's a scary situation, which is why to avoid the headache – the Celtics should do whatever they can to lock him. I know the people like, oh, because whatever type of incentives that can go into the deal, they're talking like he can make like his contract can be like four or five years, three hundred million, yeah, it's, something like that. He'll be the highest paid basketball player. In the yeah, year. and you know with Boston sports and just the teams, they're never trying to pay anybody no stupid amount of money. Not the football team, not the baseball don't team. Don't get me going on the Patriots. Like, they're never trying to <laughs> overpay for anybody. They think they don't need that in Boston. We just find guys who are tough and gritty and they'll make it work. So that's just the thing with Boston sports. But I mean, I, I, Jalen Brown deserves the money. I think he does he, as well. He, I hope he gets it. However, if he does get it, which I, I still believe he will, Jalen Brown will become the most criticized player in the NBA. It'll ch- the way everyone looks at Jalen Brown's outlook will change completely because now he's the target. He's the most highest player paid. Any type of turnover, everything gets oh, magnified yeah. in the regular. Yeah. Yeah. It changes for it changes for Jalen Brown all of a sudden once he gets that money. So I hope he's prepared for it because he's not a $300 million player. Nah. But he's going to be viewed as it. And that's going to be tough to be a second. To be the second, bill? yeah, to be the second best player on the team, and you don't perform every day and night, which is crazy be- because he, he'll get that contract. But the thing is, come this time next year, Tatum about to get the same thing and yeah. even more. So you're gonna be under that microscope for a year, but gets the money, and then next year Tatum gonna be the highest paid. And then now you got two of the, <laughs> you might have two of the most highest paid players in the league. So but it all it all even out because I think just. Everyone Years will be, later, yeah, it, it every, will, everyone will, will kind of get the same. True, you know I mean? it's just their time just came differently than you know the other, other superstars. But it's rare that the second best player yeah. on any team is the most highest paid player in, in the league. Why do you think that well, is? It's just how the how it how it happened. Per, perf, yeah, happened. perfect timing. He became the um he got the All NBA at the right time. So the Celtics, out of any team, can pay him the most, which is the only leverage the Celtics have to keep him is we can pay you more than any other team right now. All right, here's what I want to do before we wrap things up. Uh, I don't know if we did this. We haven't done this in a while, Marvin. We're we about to bring it back. We're about to put you on. You already on the hot seat, but we're about to turn the heat up just a little bit more. Oh, God. Rapid fire questions. Oh, man. We need answers okay. from you. Bang, 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 just like that. Uh, just to give you a warning, I'm like the worst of this game, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm brutal. Got to be quick on your toes, stuff, man. I'll, I'll give it a go. If you could leave here and have the greatest dessert ever right now, what would you eat? Vanilla bean cheesecake. Vanilla bean cheesecake. Okay, interesting. That was specific. I've never had it. Fuck, bro. I got to be quick. <laughs> never specific had it. Specific as hell. It just came to my For head. For someone who's bad at this game, that was a specific <laughs> ass this, this answer. Is, he, knows, he knows what he likes. <laughs> this, this is a life of bass. When it comes to my head, I just put it, write it down. All right. You know? Favorite um, basketball player growing up? Oof. MJ. MJ? Okay. I like that. I like that. 
Ah. Uh, hmm. Favorite artist to listen to when shooting around, working out, whatever the case may be. Um, artist song with either one. Oh, Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates is he, he, he gets me going. <laughs> he gets me Kevin going. That's <laughs> a different one. Kevin There's one 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 of the many, but that's the first one that came to my eye. Okay. Kevin Gates. All right. Um Early Bird, late late night. Late night. I won't go to bed till like two, three in the morning. <laughs> Just up. I suck at sleeping. Ah, the man. worst at sleeping. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see here. Um if you could vacation anywhere in the world, a place that you've never been to before, where would you go? That I never been to? Somewhere, somewhere in Europe. Well, one of those places everyone always like puts on Instagram. Like, <laughs> vacationing. It looks fun. So it's anywhere, it's always somewhere in Europe. I never know this, like the the, the, uh, the country, but like maybe I don't know, Italy, France, Italy. Yeah, uh, I got Italy France on my list. Beautiful. France is beautiful. Yeah, one of those. In five years, her hoops networks will be. Um, still popping, still fun, still alive and kicking. All right, <clears throat> this might be a tough one. This one might be the one that that holds you up a little bit. But I always gotta ask this: dinner for five, dead or alive? Who's sitting at that table with you? Famous person, not a famous person. Don't matter who it is. Anybody. Dinner for five. Oh. Dinner for five. Um, okay, so they have to be funny. Anybody you want. Um, Zoe Deschanel from New Girl. She's hilarious. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, got you know a little you know, something different. Uh, man. Uh, she's in the Marvel movies too. Is that the one? I know she's a, she's just a new girl. I don't, know. I, don't I, don't know. I don't think she's in the Marvel movies. I think you're thinking think of someone, someone else. else. <laughs> you think of the one in Iron Man and all. That's okay. That's all right. Um, Michael B. Jordan. Okay. The guy's the man. <laughs> He'll take some attention off, you know, off off of. I was about to say table. that's the most. That's the handsomest man yeah, alive. He's <laughs> dangerous, he bro. Take all the, he take all the all the attention. <laughs> um, let me see. This is a tough one. All right. I, I always get his question out. Um. Anybody, no matter who. I know. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I, I use. I mean, uh, um, got him stumped here. Uh, got him stumped. Yep, Ke- Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. I think Kevin Garnett's like one of the most hilarious people ever. <laughs> he's just so angry or like I don't know his storytelling is just like <laughs> I, I like see him on like Instagram reels. I'm just like this guy's a nut. But I feel like he's good for a couple of good stories at the table. Uh, okay. Kevin Garnett would be dope. Um two more seats. Uh literally like any any gossipy like mom in the women's basketball world. Any gossipy mom in the like world? like one of the kids' parents, like moms. Okay, because I, I just they, there's they always have some tea. I love <laughs> I love good tea. Um, so just any one of them, just sit on down, sit on down with Bash. Um, last one, last one. And uh, man, this is that's that's I have like a wild table right now. Very yeah, you um, all over the place. Yeah, this table, this table. <laughs> Garnett gonna scare some people away. Yeah, good, but it, I mean he's gonna be electric. Um. Last seat, last seat. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who? Maybe it's a family member. Family member, famous person, athlete. Somebody who maybe inspires you. Somebody's been a mentor. Kevin Gates. <laughs> oh my god, that guy's out of pocket. That guy's so out of Crazy. pocket. Crazy. I, I can't. Yeah. Um. That's someone who's scared. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I. I mean, if you want to keep it a four, you can keep it a four. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't really. You know. Yeah. It's, I'm not schmoozing at the tables. I really my 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 thing. So I can't remember. So you want to <laughs> But um, I mean, I don't know. Just you know. 
Yeah, I got a. Uh, I got nothing. You want to keep it to those four? Keep it. To four. Okay, those four. Those four would do. That's a very, very interesting. Yeah, very that's interesting. you got stuff from all over the place at that table. But yeah, what else? You got anything left? No, nah, we're going. We can wrap up. Hey man, we had a dragonfly in studio. Yeah, and it, that yes, nigga's still here. It did well. The dragon, the dragonfly's bag. It was on his back. It did yeah, well. Was. It did. Like, it was said, sleep. We wrapping up? Oh, we wrapping <laughs> yeah. up? Okay, boys. It did. It did well here. So I, I don't have any um last questions, but just to wrap up, this one to say, yo, your story's super dope. I think the best part about what you said, um, and what remarked me the most is you giving opportunity to the kids, like. You hitting up that fifteen year old girl and saying, "Yo, you're gonna be my photographer. You you got it. You know, people will probably look at for someone who's super established, or you you giving chances to kids all over to really, um, you know, put themselves out there. I think that's probably the dopest thing out of all of it. So, um, it's been really dope sitting here on Double M with you, and I'm really excited to see how far Hoop, her Hoop Networks goes." Uh, I appreciate you guys having me. This was uh, this was great. Um, yeah. I'm glad you guys uh, had me on. Um, you know, I'll just plug my socials. Oh um, yes, at absolutely. Ba- at Bash Hoops Any on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Her Hoops Network on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, yeah, follow us. We got some, we got some good stuff going on. So just uh, keep things going and yeah. Yeah, man, I'm proud of you, B, for short. Again, we've been rocking with each other for years now. I mean, obviously, every everybody has things going on in their lives, but to see what you what you started and what you got going on, what you created, you know, following you from afar, and then obviously having a chance to have you sit down here with us just to hear the story more in depth is beautiful to hear, beautiful to listen to, and, and I, I love it. And I'm just telling you, man, keep pushing forward. Keep grinding. Keep doing whatever you got to do to just take things to the next level because you got it going on right now for sure. And it is, it's great to see one of my one of my bros from way back in the day come all this way because I know we we know what we've been through going through the years and the Metco and the bus rides and oh yeah this is, this people don't remember bro we was holding it down <laughs> at high school as the oh yeah the, the student body co presidents and we was clowns and we was just having a wild time in high school I can't believe they voted for us they let the, that happen they the kids voted for us the teachers couldn't stand us we didn't show up to anything. <laughs> Every meeting, my hey, grades was terrible. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't show up. We the, didn't do anything. The teachers hated us, but we was just entertaining. We, so the people, kids, people just it was a popularity contest. Literally, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. Because I remember I being at the, the meetings and assemblies, and you could just see in the teachers' faces they despised Jeez, the fact. They despised <laughs> the fact that we had to roll. But the kids, all the students, was rocking with us, so they couldn't really yeah, do nothing about it. But it was it was good time running those hallways with with my guy right here. But yeah, man, appreciate you for sure. 130, Marv. 130 here at the Sound Lab, man. Shout out to Mello. Thank you for having us here at the Sound Lab. Shout out to Texas in the building Tex. here. Of course, of course. Got Mr. Mike Nice. Your boy. I'm DJ Mees. Bash as our special guest. This is Double M Live. And we too, the moon. The moon.